Thank you, Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. New wine for new flames. Exchanging your own flame for a fresh fire. How many of y'all want a fresh fire? Praise God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, please. Glory. Let's speak it. Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. More and more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. In other words, you should learn more and more and more how to please God. Isn't it the process that we go through? See, without... This process, there's a special process. It's called a separation process. And not only are we being separated from the world, but we're being sanctified unto the Lord. But there's another area of separation. One of the things that crushing comes for us is so that there's a separation within us. There's such a war within us sometimes. Amen? Especially in the mind and so forth and the emotion. So we are made of a spirit, soul, and body. Amen? And when you are born again, you get a new spirit. But you don't get a new soul. And you certainly don't get a new body. Not, that's a part of redemption. That's later. But as you get a new spirit within you, one of the things that the Lord begins to do is He begins to convert your soul more and more, which is your emotions, your imaginations, your feelings, and so forth. And he says, converting that, something begins to happen. There is a crushing. And the purpose of the crushing is to separate, bring understanding to his children that there is a separation between your spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit, soul, and body are not united. They're separated. To live out of your spirit, you must recognize this. Without recognizing that there's a difference between the soul and the flesh and the spirit, You'll be easily manipulated. Is everybody okay? So, in verse 2, he says, For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, and that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. So all of this is about the area of separation, sanctification. So we're to be separated from the world. Amen. You're to be separated from yourself. The old man. And in this sanctification. So one of the things the enemy tries to do right away. As soon as you are born. He wants to scar you. As quick as possible. He wants to damage you as quick as possible. So there are areas where children have actually survived abortion because it, it, it didn't happen or they started to or something happened or whatever and they survived. That's traumatic to them. When children are abused when they're young, that is traumatic to them. These are things that held on to them. They've been scarred. They've been impressed. And what prevents an individual actually from separating or identifying, recognizing the separation between the spirit, soul, and body are those damages. Is everybody with me? This is where you and I must convert and grow and go forward and begin to deal with these things in an area of not cover them up, but expose them. Because if they're not exposed, then darkness is still ruling. 
Does everybody get it? See, we've got to come to an understanding that you and I were abused when we were children. I was abused when I was a child. Of course, you don't understand the demonic realm when you're a kid. Amen? Not until you get older. But praise God that we survived until we got older. And so in that, now you're able to forgive. Why? Because you realize it wasn't them. I don't care if it was a parent. I don't care if it was grandma, grandpa, cousin, niece. What? I don't care who it was. I don't care who you were abused by any way whatsoever. Or rejected or whatever. Or verbally abused. Or physically or sexually abused. Until you come to a place and realize it wasn't them. Even though it was them. You will prevent yourself from abounding and growing. And it will prevent you from separating your spirit, soul, and body and living out of the spirit. You'll still live out of the soul more than the spirit. Is everybody okay? This is why God is bringing the body through deliverance. That's why we're getting these messages in this area. You know, so many words were spoken over us when we were children. Labels that we agreed with because we didn't know any better. I mean, how many labels we placed upon ourselves? Didn't realize they were affecting them because of the power of the life of the death in the tongue. But now God is bringing us through deliverance. The whole body is going through deliverance. He's trying to set us free and separate, sanctify your spirit from your soul and from your flesh. And until there's a recognition of this, They'll be too easily living out of the soul and open the door to the enemy. There's not enough freedom. People are still living in management, not freedom. Hello. Did we okay? Praise God. So, separation. It's a, it's a separation process. Again, the closer you get to the Lord, the more the spirit, soul, and body become a reality of influence. The closer you get to the Lord. And separation process must take place so we don't live out of the emotional soul, angry flesh, hello, but submission to the spirit. We want to live out of the spirit, nothing else. And there's an easy crossover to that where people are still living out of the flesh or out of the soul. Third John. Hallelujah. Third John verse two. You know, so many times people are not willing to expose the darkness but cover it. In verse two it says, Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper, grow, advance in all things, and be in what? Health. How many of y'all want to be healthy? How many of y'all want to have a sound mind, power, and love? Hello. That's healthy. Just as your soul prospers, so your soul must prosper, must convert. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Wow. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. As your soul, your prosperous, as it grows... As it grows, it becomes freer. In other words, there, growth is a separation, a reality of the separation between your spirit, soul, and body. And until that becomes a reality, there's still an immature state of being. Romans 2. So we see that the scriptures are always talking about advancing and exposing, becoming more mature, abounding in more, converting the soul. 
and Romans 2 2. I mean, Romans 12 2. I'm sorry. Romans 12 2. And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts or your mind that you may prove what is that good and what is acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, everything that's talking about growing and advancing, growing and advancing, that was a price Jesus paid for me and you. So he's saying, look, at, let your soul grow. Amen? Let those thoughts grow in the area where they're being exchanged from the world towards godliness. Get, start thinking the way God thinks. I mean, you know we can't think everything the way God thinks, amen? But he gave us Jesus, the Spirit of God. Not conformed, do not be conformed to the world, but renewed. In, all, in other words, the evil influences of the world, but be transformed by renewing the thoughts with a new thought pattern. See, he gives us a new way of thinking. There's a new thought pattern always coming forth. This is what the Spirit does. He burns new thought patterns for me and you. He sets us routines, which is a thought pattern. Before anything happens, he already told you. The problem is people are not recognizing it. And the problem is because they're not recognizing that there's a separation between the Spirit, their Spirit, the soul, and the flesh. So they're still living out of the soulish realm in the area where there's all emotion, all of the bondages, and all the other things of pain and the past and everything else. Believe me, the soul is associated until it is fully converted with the past, the old man. So every time something comes up, we go, oh, and then it brings you right to the past. But see, you can say no to it. You can say no to everything out of the spirit. And not allow the soul to mislead you. Not allow the flesh to react. Well, you can choke this flesh until it's responding. That's if you have dominion over both things. Both areas. But there must be a reality of separation between them. Not a oneness with it. You are not one with your soul. You are not one with the flesh. They are there. They are used and functional to survive in this realm. But when you go home, you're different. Hello. You're a new man. Your soulish realm is no longer with you anymore. You are a spirit. And you think differently, see, th see things. Everything is different. Jesus gives us the example when he rose from the dead. Amen? Flesh and bone. But he was spirit. He had a glorified body. And this is what we are aiming towards in the transition, in the transformation where we get a glorified body in the rapture when we go home. Separation process. There is a process of separation. We must allow the spirit to lead us to these things. Again, without recognizing that you are a spirit, soul, and body. Then you live on management, not dominion. Hebrews 4. We know what's getting ready to happen before it happens. <laughs> Again, but if you're not paying attention, if you're still living out of the soul, you're still involved in yourself. Me, 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 me. What about me? See, living out of the spirit is not living out of the self. In verse 12, Roman, or Hebrews 4, verse 12, let's speak it. For the word of God is what? Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the what? The soul and the spirit and the joints and marrows, which is the what? the flesh, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <laughs> so the word of God causes separation of the spirit, soul, and body. 
If you believe it, receive it, and activate it. The heart, it exposes the heart's intentions, and it discerns all thoughts, whether they are of God or not, where you have dominion. But if you're living out of the spirit, you have dominion to accept it and reject it. If you're living out of the soul, you don't have the dominion. Soul, that's what you ever hear people call them, soul power. Yeah. Ain't no soul power. No such thing. No such thing as soulmates either. That's oh, my soulmate. Get out of here, bony. Soulmate. It says we become one in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God causes separation. Romans or Proverbs 16. Thirty-two. Sixteen thirty-two. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. He who is slow to anger is better than the Almighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So again, in the area of ruling the spirit is submitting in that area to where your spirit is ruling. So you're living out of the spirit over the soul and over the flesh. So whatever is coming in through the thoughts, through the emotions and everything else, your spirit is leading. Look at, after a while I was filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, I never read the word of God. But I was living out of the spirit. I didn't want to read the word of God. I didn't think I needed to. I said, Lord, just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Because his voice was as clear as could be. But anything that occurred in my, in my life at that time before he caused me to read the word. Anything that came to me, the Holy Spirit just said, it's not me. It's this is me. This is, whatever. I wasn't living in the soul. That's the soul. That's the emotion. See, he allowed a separation. I understood the separation. I was alert of the separation between my spirit, soul, and body. And if you are alert to that, fully alerted to that, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, because He is the writer of the Word, He's the author, will speak to you. You'll know the Word more than you've ever studied it before. I didn't want to know the Word of God. I didn't want to know the Bible because I saw too many hypocrites beating people up with the Bible, basically. I wanted a relationship. I wanted to know him. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. It was that simple. And then he caused me to know the word. I never, anyways, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing, to be honest with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 6. But he had a plan. Second Corinthians six, verse eleven. O Corinthians, we have spoken open to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what affections or emotions. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. It's amazing how people are still yoked with unbelievers. Why? Why does he tell us that? Because he wants our spirit, soul, and body to maintain his separation. When people are yoked with unbelievers, it causes confusion. They now begin to live out of the soul instead of the spirit. They call it compassion. It's false compassion. Does everybody understand? Jesus had great compassion. He healed people and so forth. But he never walked up to him and said, oh, it's going to be okay. Does everybody understand that? He never went soulishly. In fact, he was stern most of the time. Even his compassion, he was stern. His heart was to set people free 
and to separate him from the emotional arena and from the flesh. He wanted them to live out of the spirit. It doesn't mean you can't use the soul or the flesh. You're to have dominion over your soul and your flesh. To, you're to use it to benefit the kingdom of God. It isn't to use you to benefit the kingdom of darkness. Amen? Oh, don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I'll dwell with them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If they do what? Come out from among them, and be what? Separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. Can you touch something unclean in your thoughts? Amen. That's where most of it comes from. Amen. You don't touch something unclean with your physical hand unless you touch it with your thought first. And I will receive you. Again, get rid of the things that are unclean and I will receive you. You want to get closer to the Lord, you got to begin to expose these things. Not pet them, not comfort them, not justify them. And I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. <laughs> Again, they were restricted by their emo own emotional distresses of the past, not the future. The enemy can only attack you from the past, not the future. Because the enemy doesn't have one, but you're to be living from the future. 1 Peter 1. You know, there's, he's even, there's so much stuff going on right now. It's incredible in the body. Even there's a separation between the goat and the sheep. Amen? The follower and the non-follower. The wannabe and willoughby. 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse 6, let's speak it together. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. And this you greatly rejoice, though, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by what? Various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, expressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Wow. Various trials to expose those who are genuine or not. And again, your trials, and you've heard this saying over and over and over, your trials and tribulations are exposing your impurities and your enemy. And again, these are there so that you, you and I can discern the separation between the spirit, the soul, and the flesh. There must be a separation and a reality to it. Or you will live a roller coaster life. Up and down. You'll be led by your emotions. You'll be up one day, down the next day. You'll blame everybody for the side of the bed you got out of. Man, you got out of the wrong side of the bed. No, you're just living out of the soul. Don't get near that person. He's grumpy. That's a cartoon character, isn't it? Grumpy? <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> See? First John chapter 2. <laughs> grumpy and dumpy and all the other ones. Mm -hmm. He had goofy. It was <laughs> all soulish arena stuff, man. <laughs> Glory. I won't.
don't go there. <laughs> First John chapter 2. <laughs> Verse 15. <laughs> Everybody there? Praise be to God. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Remember, the world lives out of the soul, in the flesh. They don't live out of the spirit. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Let me ask you a simple question. Can you fully do the will of God living out of the soul? No. Can God trust you? No. See, there are people who live out of the Spirit in the afternoon. <laughs> Come 5 o'clock, man, they're living out of the soul. Come 7 o'clock, they're living out of the flesh. And they recycle. Soul, spirit, flesh, spirit, soul, flesh. And they cycle all day. You don't know what they're going to do. God is looking for those who are not willing to look back. He's looking for those who are willing to look Live out of the spirit, not out of the soul. He can't trust you if you're living out of the soul. Because he knows it's going to lead to the flesh anyways. And then you're going to manifest. Only those who abide and do the will of God will abide with the Lord. Titus 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Remind them to be subject to the rulers and the authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one, to be peaceful, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. Why? They were living out of the soul. This is all soulish stuff right here. And flesh. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But what? Avoid foolish disputes genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law or anything else. For they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonishment, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Again, what's that person living out of? The soul and the flesh, not out of the spirit. Amen. So we must be careful to maintain good works. The Holy Spirit is one who's regenerating us all the time. He's helping the, the assistance to the converting of the soul. In Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And we know all that all things work together for the good to those who what? Love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Now I want to share something quickly. He said all things are going to work according to the good to those who what? Love God. Now does that mean because you say you love God it's going to work according to the good? No. He says if you love me you'll what? Obey me. Amen. 
See, people lose sight of it. They think, oh, I love God. Everything's going to work. It's good. No, it ain't. Not until you start obeying him. Nothing works for the good without obedience. He does not promote disobedience. He promotes obedience. And you're not going to be obedient living out of the soul. You'll start, but you won't finish. Amen? See, living out of the soul never allows you to finish something. Only through the Spirit can you finish anything. For we know that all things work together for the good to those who are, love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he what? For knew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. <laughs> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. Wow. Ephesians 2. So are we growing every day? Are we learning every day? Are we growing? Are we, is, are we recognizing and, and allowing that separation, that process of separation, not only the process of conversion, but the process of separation between your spirit, your soul, and your body be more a reality? See, before you do, do anything, you know whether you're in the spirit you're going to be in the spirit, or you're going to come out of the soul. You're going to react in the flesh, the, the soul, or respond out of the spirit, either one. But you know it before you do it. Hello? So if you can recognize it more and more and more, become more sensitive to it, don't you think you'd live out of the spirit more? Amen? Amen? So we got to allow that separation process to continue. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it. And you he made alive who were what? Dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of what? And so man, you're battling that all the time, aren't you? Among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. And by his plan or grace, you've been saved. And he raised us together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace in Jesus Christ, in his, in his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in then. We are his workmanship, not out of the soul, not out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. Amen? Remember, you're to have dominion over the soul and spirit. You're to use those parts. They're not to use you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Following the plan of escape, ooh, to separate the spirit, soul, and body, and mind, and heart. So each one is monitored. Each part is monitored. Then it can be healed, trans 
transformed, converted, and positioned to a higher life, a new way of living according to the counsel of the Lord. God is always trying to bring us to a higher level. He's trying to bring us to a more trusting place. Amen? Higher ground. He's trying to bring us to a higher ground. That's why everything is happening right now. That's why the body of Christ is going. That's why the world is crazy. So we can look good. 2 Corinthians 5. Oh, happy days. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 16. You know, one of the things, if you know you're going to speak out of the soul or the flesh, just shut up. Don't say anything, man. Take dominion. Pull that string, you know. If you have to take it off and put it around your mouth. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in the anointing, he's a what? He's a new creation. Again, I want to share with you, living out of the soul or the flesh will not manifest that new area. Only out of the Spirit can you understand that you are a new creation where old things have passed away and all things have become new. This is where literally old things are passing away. All the scars from the past. All the hurts from the All the abuses from the past. Why? Because you say, I am a new creation in Christ. Not uh, because you heard someone tell you that. Not because you just read it, but you know it. And you can only know it out of the Spirit, not out of the soul or out of the flesh. I can't tell you how many times I've been freed by knowing it and confessing it because I know it. I am a new creation in Christ. Everything must go away. And that's not just a one-time event. That's every single day. You're a new creation. So when something happens to you, you got to come up and rise up in the spirit. Wait a minute. I'm a new creation in Christ. This ankle can't bother me. That was yesterday. It's got to heal quick. So I can play tennis and stuff like that, you know. Does everybody understand that? You know, again, emotional scars are the heart. They're the hardest. They're the most painful. But if you're a new creation in Christ, they're gone. Why? Jesus took this scar for you. He took it for you. Everything he paid on the price. You know, really, I, I think... Man, you know, when we get home, we're going to feel like a real bunch of idiots sometimes. And he, he's going to probably stand before us and go, why didn't you accept what I did for you? And he's going to go, look, every, every stripe, I took that scar for you. I took that pain for you. I took that abuse for you. I took all of these for you. Why did you not receive them? Why did you not believe me that I gave them to you? I paid the price for you. See, because we're still living out of how we feel. We're still living out of the flesh. Not living out of the spirit. Again, only living out of the spirit can say, yes, I got it. I'm accepting it. I receive it. And I'm manifesting it. Amen? Out of the soul. I didn't get it yet. Wait a minute. You just said you're a new creation in Christ. Yeah, I know. Oh, you wimp. All of these wimpies still living out of the soul. Not willing to allow the separation. In fact, some people are still holding on to it. Don't leave me. Hallelujah. Speak to me. <laughs> Speak to me, soul. 
We must be sold out, man. Philippians 3. Are you, new, are you a new creation or aren't you? Oh, happy days. Philippians 3, verse 7. Yes. I love this verse. But what things were gained to me. Come on, are you there? These things I count lost for the what? For Christ, the anointing, the presence, his eternal power, truth, and love. Yet, I, I, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Now, is, is he out of the spirit? Yeah. Listen, everything that he's saying right now is, is the confirmation that he's a new creation in Christ. <laughs> he's not waiting for anything. He's got it. And indeed, I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. I don't look back. That I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Believe me, you will not grow if you're still holding on to anything of the past. Brethren, I do not count myself as apprehended, but one thing I do. Oh, snap, here's the famous word, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. So you think God wants us to think this way? Amen. This is all the confirmation of a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, living out of the spirit, not out of the soul, not out of the flesh. Therefore, let us have the same mind if you're mature enough. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. God will not use a person that is always looking back. He can't. You must forgive, bless, forget, and get reconnected to the future. Live out of the spirit, man. And don't hold on to things that are still connected to your past. It's just, what, what's it going to do? It's going to allow your soul to have more dominion over your spirit. Because you're going to have an, a, an emotional attachment with them. Oh, they're sentimental. Bummer. Get the sentimentals under your feet and live out of the spirit. Listen, that was one of the first things the Lord did with my house. All the things that were sentimental. Oh, man, these, oh, boy, get rid of it. Am I your fulfillment or not? But, Lord, these are great pictures. These are, one, these are things are blessed. I didn't get rid of it. I want to be first in your life. And until you allow me to be first, I won't be first. Does everybody get it? I'm telling you, there's a great deliverance Right now, the process in the body of Christ. People are still having, holding on to these things in their past. False hopes from the past. Hallelujah. Again, living out of your spirit is higher ground. You know, don't lose sight. Remember Ephesians 6. We do not fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness. Amen? So that unseen realm is always influencing you. Twisting your thoughts as much as they can. But you know, if you live out of the Spirit, where's your thoughts at? In the soul. You'll have dominion. 
I'm going to close it somewhere. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. You know, people get separated from people. When one is living out of the spirit, one's the other is living out of the soul. They can't handle one another. Does everybody get it? That's unevenly yoked. Proverbs 4, verse 1. <clears throat> Let's speak it. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom and get what? Understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Why? Remember, the words of his mouth is causing separation. Amen? Of your spirit, soul, and body. Do not forsake her. She will preserve, preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. What's he talking about? Wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. What's wisdom do? It tells you what to do. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace. Ooh. And a crown of glory, she will deliver you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in a way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they do e have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Again, let the process continue. The separation. Living out of the spirit, not out of the soul. You run, you rule the soul and the flesh. Never allow it to rule you. Amen. Remember, there's a great deliverance coming to the body right now. We're in the process of it. God is raising up warriors because of this end time. So many, you know how many people are, are being wiped out right now? People are being wiped out by fear. They're being wiped out. Why? Because they live in the soul. Fear is not in the spirit. It's in the soul. I don't know what's going to happen. Who cares? God says, if he be before me, who can be against me? I don't have to be concerned what's going to happen. My only concern is what does he want me to do? Amen? And I'm not going to be able to get that through the soul or the flesh. I'm going to get that through the spirit. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that everyone is taken your word and the seed will penetrate every part of our being and separate our spirit, soul, and body and discern our thoughts and our hearts and tents that we will be hungry and thirsty for your word and willing to live out of the spirit and not the soul. Breaking ourselves loose from all those sentimental things that hold us from growing and following you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.